Today's lesson is Naomi Osaka, hard hitting and humble. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our show. My name is Roger. And my name is Helen. And Helen and I today are going to be talking about our featured person, Naomi Osaka. She is hard hitting, but she's still a very humble human being. And she's a new star in the world of women's tennis. Are you a big fan of tennis, Helen? I am. I really enjoy watching tennis, especially women's tennis, because so much is going on and there's a lot of action. And you also get a really good sense of the tennis player's personality when you watch them play. Some of them are very aggressive, they're hard hitting, and others are more laid back. They take a more relaxed approach to the game. So it's a very interesting game to watch. Uh huh. Tennis is one of those sports where、uh, both the men and the women are popular, whereas in, say, soccer, mostly people watch the men play and not so much the women. But tennis,、uh, women are pretty much equal with the men there. So we are going to be talking about Naomi Osaka today. She's kind of the new rising star in the world of women's tennis. So let's get to it, everybody. Let's、uh, listen to the first paragraph and we'll come back to talk about it. Naomi Osaka, hard hitting and humble. Since defeating tennis legend Serena Williams and becoming the number one female tennis player in the world, Naomi Osaka has been the talk of the town. The 21 year old has gained people's attention for not only her talent, but also her shy, modest personality and unique cultural background. 大家好，第一部分我们看到动词 defeat。指击败、战胜。例如 ，Our team defeated the team from Lewis High School in the final game. 我们的队伍在决赛中击败了来自 Lewis 高中的队伍。另外 ，defeat 除了可以当动词，也可以做名词，指战败、失败。我们可以说 ，My father is not the one who accepts defeat. So that's why he quickly got right back on his feet after losing his job last month. 我爸爸不是一个可以接受失败的人，所以他在上个月失业后很快的重新振作起来。接着，我们再看到一个单字 modest， 这个字为形容词，课文中指谦虚的，像是 Mr. Jenkins is too modest to tell you of his accomplishments himself. Jenkins 先生非常谦虚，以至于他没办法亲自告诉你他的成就。另外 ，modest 除了上面的意思，还有以下两个意思。首先 ，modest 可以形容不大的或是适度的，所以可以说 Judy makes a modest living as a legal secretary at a law firm. Judy 在一家法律事务所担任律师秘书，赚的钱不多不少。再来 ，modest 还可以指朴素的。我们可以说 ，Considering Tiffany's colorful personality, we were surprised to see her arrive in such modest attire. 考虑到 Tiffany 花枝招展的个性，我们很讶异看到她抵达时穿着如此朴素的衣着。Okay, it's time for us to discuss the title of today's lesson. Let's、uh, do that first here. Naomi Osaka, of course, that's the name of the tennis player herself, and we're describing her as being hard hitting and humble. Hard hitting—that means she's kind of an aggressive player, right? Right. Hard hitting describes the way she plays tennis. She is aggressive and she perhaps hits the ball really hard. And humble talks about her character. Character, her personality. So, despite being an aggressive player, you would think that her character would be very aggressive as well. But no, her character, her personality is quite different. Yeah, she's kind of、uh, mellow and laid back, kind of relaxed. Even though she's a great champion, and she does hit the ball pretty hard, she was able to defeat Serena Williams last year. At the U.S. Open, and she's now a big star in the world of tennis. But、uh, we're also describing her as being humble. How would you define the word humble, Helen? 
Well, a humble person is somebody who doesn't like to brag about their achievements. They don't really like to talk about all of the positive traits that they have. They're very laid back. A humble person is usually somebody who is well liked. Right. So, for example, I could say, despite Mr. Lee's great success in business, he's still a very humble person. But in any case, we're describing Naomi Osaka as being humble as well. So,、uh, let's、uh, dive into the first paragraph here and take a look at the first sentence. Now, the first sentence we have: Since defeating tennis legend Serena Williams and becoming the number one female tennis player in the world, Naomi Osaka has been the talk of the town. Indeed. So, in this sentence, we've got the、uh, word "defeat" as a verb, and then we've also got a phrase, "the talk of the town." So, let's、uh, talk first about this vocabulary word, "defeating," and we could also say, "since she defeated Serena Williams,、uh, she has been the talk of the town." So, here the verb to defeat means that you beat someone in some sort of competition. Right, you win against someone in a fight or an election. Also, you defeat them. So you can say the soldiers defeated their enemies in battle, or you can say the San Diego Padres defeated the Cleveland Indians eight to zero. Right, you could also use this in the passive voice to say that you were the one who lost. Hillary Clinton was defeated by Donald Trump in the 2016 election. So here, of course, we're talking about Serena Williams being defeated by Naomi Osaka. Since Naomi Osaka defeated Serena Williams and became the number one female tennis player in the world, she has been the talk of the town. The talk of the town—that means she's been very popular, right? Right. The talk of the town can be a person or a thing that is talked about by many people in a city or town. In an excited way, so it's usually positive when you're the talk of the town. Right when that、uh, fella down in Gaoshang,、uh, Mr. Han, won the mayoral election down there, he was the talk of the town. Everybody down in Gaoshang, well, most people were pretty excited about his election. He was the talk of the town, and that could also be used to describe celebrities if they become suddenly famous, just like、uh, Ms. Osaka here. She became famous pretty quickly, so she's been the talk of the town. She's very popular. People like to talk about her. And in the next sentence, it says the 21-year-old has gained people's attention for not only her talent but also her shy, modest personality and unique cultural background. So yes, she's 21 years old. That sentence tells us this, and she's gained people's attention. She's become popular. People have started to pay attention to her, and we're also talking about her personality here. She's kind of shy, right? She's also modest. Is that similar in meaning to humble? They're pretty similar to each other. A modest person doesn't like to talk about themselves or their achievements or their abilities, even if they're successful at something. So a modest person can. Can be a humble person, so I'd say the two words are quite interchangeable. And aside from being modest, she also has a unique cultural background. And the word "unique" here refers to something that is special or unusual, but in a positive way. Exactly. So, of course, the first time I had chow tofu here in Taiwan, I thought, "Hmm, that's a very unique flavor. I've never had anything like that before." But we're also talking about Naomi's unique cultural background. Okay, so she does have an interesting cultural background, who her parents are, where she grew up, and stuff like that. And it is indeed quite interesting, which we'll get to in just a second here. So let's do that. Let's move on to the next paragraph. We'll listen first. Osaka plays for Japan, but had a multicultural upbringing. Born to a Haitian father and Japanese mother, Osaka moved from Japan to the United States at three years old. Her first language is English, but she also grew up speaking Creole with her grandparents and Japanese with her mother. For Osaka, it's impossible to pick which culture she identifies with because all three are a part of her. I don't really know what feeling Japanese or Haitian or American is supposed to feel like," she says. "I just feel like me." 第二部分，我们看到形容词 multicultural 这个字也可以念成 multicultural， 指多元文化的。举例来说 ，The neighborhood has a very multicultural makeup. 
，这个社区的组成文化相当多元。再来，我们看到一个单字 upbringing， 这个字是名词，指教养、培育、成长的过程。像是 some parents hold regular gatherings to share the upbringing of their babies。有些家长举办固定的聚会来分享他们宝宝的成长过程。接着，我们看到动词 identify， 课文中有认同、理解的意思，常用 identify with somebody or something 来表示认同某人、理解某个观点、问题等。例如 ，I really identify with the song about growing up in a small town. 我对这首描述在小镇成长的歌曲感同身受。另外 ，identify 除了上面的意思外，还可以指识别、辨认出。我们可以说 ，The police asked me if I could identify the suspect among a set of photographs. 警方问我是否可以从一组照片中认出嫌犯。Okay, so here in the second paragraph, it begins by saying Osaka plays for Japan, but had a multicultural upbringing. So indeed, she plays for Japan if she's involved in international tournaments or if she's in the Olympics. She's going to represent Japan. That's right. However, though she has a Japanese name and she represented Japan in the tournament, her background isn't fully Japanese. In fact, she has a multicultural upbringing. Multicultural here means involving different cultures. So she wasn't raised in a purely Japanese culture or an American culture, but she had different influences growing up. And upbringing here means the way you are taught to behave by your parents or by your teachers as you grow up. Right. For me, I had a pretty typical American upbringing growing up in the Midwest United States. There, so it was pretty typical, pretty common in the United States. That was my upbringing. But、uh, here, of course, we're talking about her unique upbringing. It's multicultural.、Uh, let's、uh, find out what that's all about. Here, it says, "Born to a Haitian father and Japanese mother." Osaka moved from Japan to the United States at three years old, or when she was three years old, she began living in the United States. So this is talking about her multicultural background or multicultural upbringing. Her father was Haitian, which means he was from Haiti, the country in the Caribbean. There, I think Haiti is half of the island of Hispaniola, and the other country on that island is the Dominican Republic. So he's Haitian. And her mother is Japanese, so we could say she's biracial here, which would be Haitian and Japanese, and also she grew up in the United States mostly. Right, she certainly has a very interesting ethnic background, I would say, and that also influences the languages that she speaks. And it says here that her first language is English, but she also grew up speaking Creole with her grandparents and Japanese with her mother. Very good. So that would、uh, describe her multicultural background here. So her father's Haitian, which means when she spoke to his parents,、uh, she spoke to them in Creole.、Uh, we'll describe that in just a couple of seconds here. But also she spoke to her mother in Nihongo in Japanese. So my goodness, she could be multilingual growing up there,、uh, speaking the language of Haiti there and the language of Japan, and then moving to the United States, of course, speaking English. So. That's a、uh, very complicated there, very unique there, and her first language is English, I guess, because she grew up in the United States, right?、Uh, which you, you did too, Helen. You grew up in the United States too, right? So your first language is English, I assume. Right. I also went to the United States when I was three years old, and、uh, my first language, I would say, is English because that is the language that I used in school and the language that I feel the most comfortable in. So here. Osaka's first language is English, likely because she grew up in the United States, and Creole, which is a very interesting language because it's not exactly a language like French or English or Japanese is a language. It's actually a mix of various languages. It can be defined as a mix of a European language and another language that is spoken as the first language of a people. And in this case, 
The other language that's not a European language is an African language. Indeed. So、uh, we don't quite know exactly the nature of the Creole language. Let's let's just say that's the language of her grandparents there, and so she spoke Creole with them, and she spoke Japanese with her mother. And then here it says for Osaka, it's impossible to pick which culture she identifies with because all three are a part of her. So people would ask her, "Well, are you Haitian? Well, yes and no. Are you Japanese? Well, yes and no. Are you American? Well, yes and no." So it's hard for her to identify with any of them because she's just、uh, kind of going back and forth between all three of them all the time. Right, and I would say that that's a question that comes up mainly in a. Asian countries, maybe in Japan, they might see Osaka as somebody who is Japanese because of her name, and then they will look at her, and then the question comes up: Do you identify more with being American, with being Haitian? Because Japanese people also have very fascinated with the concept of the hafu, people who have、uh, parents from different cultures, so they're half Japanese and half another culture. But in the states, really, nobody. Right, nobody would ask such questions because almost everybody is mixed, and many people are mixed in America. There are a lot of people, indeed, who are mixtures of various、uh, cultures. Hunxie is the term they often use here in Taiwan. Of course, I've、uh, heard the word biracial. Okay, I've heard that quite frequently, but I guess in this case, she would be triracial. I guess American, Haitian, and Japanese. So、uh, I guess you'd have to ask her how she would identify herself. And here, the term is I. Identify with, okay. So identify is a verb here. That just means how you define yourself or what sort of qualities or characteristics you use to identify yourself or define yourself or give yourself a definition of who you are. So do you identify with Taiwan? Well, you were born here, but you were raised in the United States. I guess I could ask that question to you, Helen. Do you identify more with Taiwan or with the United States? No,、oh, I probably. Identify with both countries because I have had experience living in both places. So it's very difficult to say that I identify with only one place. Okay, very good. So、uh, for her, I guess she's more into her own personality, as she says here. I don't really know what feeling Japanese or Haitian or American is supposed to feel like. She says so. She doesn't really know what it's like to be Japanese or Haitian or American because, like we said, she's been going back and forth. Between these different cultures, all her life, but she just says, "I just feel like me," and I think that's a pretty good definition here. She doesn't really identify with any culture per se, but、uh, she's just happy to be herself, as she says, "I just feel like me and nobody else." Okay, that brings us to the end of the second part of our lesson. Let's now listen to the third part. Osaka's journey to tennis stardom began as a child, thanks to her father. Inspired by how Serena and Venus Williams' father trained his daughters, Osaka's father decided to teach his two daughters to play tennis as well. Under their father's guidance, the girls began hitting anywhere from hundreds to thousands of balls daily. For Naomi, beating her older sister was all the motivation she needed to succeed. The third part, we see the word stardom. 这个字是名词，用来指明星地位或是身份。像是 to reach stardom, you must do something to make yourself stand out. 想要有明星的地位，你必须要做些事情来让自己突出。最后，我们看到名词 motivation， 有动机、诱因之意。举例来说 ，George said he wanted to marry Allison for love. But his real motivation was her family's money. George 说是出于爱才想娶 Allison， 但其实家族财富才是背后真正的原因。另外，补充 motivation 的动词 motivate, m o t i v a t e, motivate， 指给予动机、刺激。所以我们可以说 ，the tough job market motivated Jeff to seek additional career training. 竞争的职场刺激了 Jeff 寻求额外的职业训练。
Okay, let's break into the third part of our lesson here. The first sentence says, "Osaka's journey to tennis stardom began as a child, thanks to her father." So here we've got the word stardom.、Uh, that just kind of means the state of being a star, right? Right. It's the state of being very famous. So how did Osaka become such a star, so famous in the world of tennis? Well, there's a story behind that, and it has to do with her father. Exactly. So this, of course, is her journey to being a star in tennis, and it's thanks to her father. It says here, inspired by how Serena and Venus Williams' father trained his daughters, Osaka's father decided to teach his two daughters to play tennis as well.、Hmm, that sounds very similar here. And here we've got the verb inspire,、uh, more specifically, to be inspired by someone. That means they inspire you. You look at them, you see what they're doing, and you think, "Wow, that's really cool." They are. Are role models for me. I want to be like them. Right, and if you inspire someone else, it means you give that person the idea or the enthusiasm to do something. So Osaka's father saw what Serena and Venus Williams' father were doing with his daughters, and he decided to do the same for Naomi. Exactly. So he probably thought, "Hey, my daughters are just as talented as the Williams sisters. So hey, let me teach them tennis. Let me coach them as well." And under their father's guidance, the girls began hitting anywhere from hundreds to thousands of balls daily. So here, of course, under their father's guidance, they hit. Anywhere from hundreds to thousands of balls. So anywhere here is referring to a range. You could say from hundreds to thousands of balls.、Uh, we don't know the exact count, but they were basically hitting balls on the tennis court all day long. They lost count. Right. Here, anywhere is used for saying a number or an amount that is within a particular range, but you don't really know the exact figure. Okay, for Naomi, beating her older sister was all the motivation she needed to succeed. And here we've got the word motivation, which is a noun from the verb to motivate. Motivation. How would you define that, Helen? Motivation is really it's a feeling. Usually, it's a feeling of enthusiasm or interest that makes you determined to do something. So I could say the teacher wanted to increase her students' motivation for learning by coming up with different games. Indeed, or I could say my Spanish teacher gave me a lot of motivation to study Spanish, and hence I moved to Spain right after college. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. It's time now to listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天文法重点。课文第二部分一开始提到 ，Osaka plays for Japan but had a multicultural upbringing. 大阪直美代表日本出赛，不过她有着多元文化的成长过程。好，句子里面的 upbringing 这个单词其实很好理解哦。Bring up 它就有养育、抚养、长大的意思。那我们把 up 移到 bring 的前面，然后在字尾加上 ing 变成 upbringing， 那就表示教养、养育、培育或是成长过程。那这个单词它通常会用单数形。好，另外句子里面还用到 multicultural 这个形容词，它表示多元文化的。那这个字就是由 multi 表示许多，再加上 cultural 表示跟文化有关而组成的。好，那我们就顺便来学字首 multi 以及它相关的单字。multi 它表示许多。一个以上，或者是好几倍，像 multiple 这个字呢，它就是由 multi 加上 p l e， 那么 p l e 它有折叠、重叠的意思，所以 multiple 它就有多重的意思，或是多个的。好，再来看到 multitude， 它是由 multi 加上名词字尾 t u d e 而来的。Multitude 就可以表达许多或是大量。那我们常常会用 a multitude of 加上名词来表达大量的什么什么。好，那其中还有 multi city 就可以用来表达多个城市的。Multimedia 表示多媒体的。Multi purpose 是多功能的、多重用途的。Multinational 表示跨国的、多国的。还有 multilingual 表示能通多种语言的或是使用多种语言的
。好，同样在课文第二部分的最后，大阪直美说他不太清楚当日本人、海地人或是美国人该是什么样的感觉，他只觉得他就是像自己。好，这边用到 be supposed to， 我们来学它的几种用法哦。第一种呢是用 be supposed to 来表达应该怎么样。被预期应该要怎么样？在这个用法里面 ，be 动词我们是用现在式，像是 We're supposed to meet at the library at 9 a.m. 我们早上九点要在图书馆碰面。好，第二种用法是表达原本应该怎么样，却没有怎么样。那在这个用法里面 ，be 动词主要用过去式表达，像是 We were supposed to be at the library, but we went to the movies instead. 我们原本应该在图书馆，但却跑去看电影了。好，那第三种用法是表达某个人有责任或是有义务去做某事，像是 You're not supposed to touch the paintings， 你不应该碰触那些画作。那么第四个，它是用来表达公认或是一般认为某人或某事物怎么样。当我们说 He's supposed to be the best player on the team。意思就是说，一般认为他是那个球队里面最厉害的球员。好，以上是今天重点整理，我们来回顾今天的单词吧。Defeat. The British defeated the French in a battle that took place in Quebec in 1759. Legend. Usain Bolt, who holds the fastest record for both the 100 and 200 meter races, is a sports legend. Modest. Bill is too modest to admit how important his role was in this project. Unique, with his unique painting technique, Vincent Van Gogh created wonderfully expressive works of art. Identify, I really identified with the character in the movie because I've been through many of the same struggles. Inspire, the speech inspired audience members to think about how their actions affect others. Motivation. Wanting to be as successful as someone you admire can be a great source of motivation. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program. And please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Roger. I'm Helen. See, See you next time. time.